understanding the isolated queen pawn structure or uh, systems or what you will call it. These kind of positions arise in a lot of different very popular openings. So understanding them and knowing what to do is important and is something uh, that you should prioritize if you want to excel at chess. Uh, today we're going to look at when the structure transforms into a symmetrical structure. So white takes on d5 in this game and black will take back with the pawn and they will have, we will have a symmetrical structure. What happens there? What are the rules? And so on. I can um, I can assure you that it's uh, it's kind of simple and easy to remember. So today is going to be quite easy, uh, and we're going to end with a great quote by Dave Obalo, uh, when who was not very content with losing this game. Uh, so I, I already spoil all the fun. Let's get going. It's from uh, 2000 and three the Danish championship and I'm white against Dava Palo uh, who unfortunately doesn't play chess anymore but was a very uh, or is a very strong grandmaster um, and this is known as from the Karakan to the Pano variation this is well known and uh, is a way to get isolated queen pawn if you instead prefer the Carlsberg structure you can play c3 E6, so e, bishop e7, and I would not recommend this move. Uh, this is simply too passive. Uh, I would recommend bishop b4 if if you're going to play the e6 system. I think the best system for for black here is to go uh, knight c6, maybe followed by bishop d4, bishop e6, or d takes c4, and so on. There's a lot of theory, uh, but I think this system is probably the best. Uh, bet black half for an eagle. e6, uh, knight f3, and notice if you go bishop b4 and white goes bishop d3, we have transposed into a Nimsu Indian. But bishop e7 is, uh, is a different beast, and uh, it's very normal to take here. We could get the symmetrical structure immediately if black took back here, but in this case, um, this is rather passively placed, and white has a slight bot nice initiative uh, he would be the first to, to play something like this you maybe i think my plan was to go bishop b5 check and bishop g5 and be very very active and in general black scores badly uh, when you get this position with with the bishop on e7 and and also the, this the the black position doesn't have any scope if you play well you equalize and and this is not really a great prize right so taking back with the knight is, of course, the main line. Here the main line is uh, bishop d3. Uh, but another move that's not bad is bishop c4. And that's what I did. Uh, also because I knew that Dava was probably well prepared against bishop d3. And, uh, and, and all this is very well known. And here uh, the best move for black. The, it used to be uh, that black played knight takes c3. But in, I think it's general considered that these positions are better for white. The attacking chances on the king side is are pretty uh, serious. And uh, there's, among other games, uh, the game Kurt Hansen, Kirill Georgiev from 1984, when Kurt Hansen, the Danish grandmaster, became junior world champion. And that's one of my favorite games from this, where it features the uh, sacrifice with h4. Another move, uh, and I think the main line uh, these days, is to go uh, bishop f6 here, and with the idea to go uh, knight e7 and uh, bolster uh, this pawn on, on, on d5. Uh, Davar uh, was caught unprepared here and he played b6. And that looks very, very natural. And this is also what Al Yechen did against Bart Winnig in Aro 1938. And uh, my response was the same as Bart Winnig's. I took on d5. And, uh, and now we have a symmetrical structure, but we have a symmetrical structure where uh, this uh, knight is, is, is a little bit loose and white is a hit in development, attacking the knight and bishop d7 uh, is losing all the game in the database. I think the most common move is bishop b7, looks more natural, but it doesn't matter. These positions, it, 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 they are in general equal, 
but if you have an initiative, you have a, a decent chance of getting an advantage. And here, white definitely has more t uh, more space and more time, and and is 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 better developed. So he is better here. We can also see that uh, putting pressure on it immediately, and it's it's a bit annoying for black. Uh, these things here. Well, white is very very active, and black is not really clear to free himself played the, this move makes sense attacking counter attacking d4 rook c1 and uh, here this move uh, was a clever move by Dava. he's uh, preparing to to take back with the rook on c6 and uh, and if with the rook takes he will take e1 and play queen e8 and regaining uh, the the piece, so and so and here he just covers everything on this this one here, right? But okay, so that was pretty well played, and that also show why Davor is a strong grandmaster. But white is still better because black's pieces are passive, and this move is of course I prevent any kind of uh, idea with this, but it's also nice to get some air for the king, just. Luft and uh, be able to to not be made and a6 a3 preventing any kind of uh, thing going here and and it's hard to find a good move for black here uh, what to do it's you can't move the queen you and uh, well you can move it to f8 but what kind of move is that and uh, the bishop moving hmm so uh, he decided to okay uh, let's try and, and and see what we can do here and this um, but White still keeps an ongoing initiative, and the important thing in these positions is that to know that okay, you have an, an ongoing initiative. Try to keep it going and see if you can win something, or uh, better, uh, unless you win something big, uh, turn it into an attack. You want to attack uh, if you can find something, or make it more passive. Uh, okay, and this forces, of course, this move takes take and knight here and this is of course uh, rather unpleasant for black uh, this knight is very strong it might go here it might go here it's it might even go um, to g4 and uh, and what to do especially the knight d7 is is probably annoying he, he decided to take but that loses a pawn so here, White is winning a pawn. He's the, the pawn here, due to activity, the, the pawn structure is almost symmetrical. And uh, and if 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 Black had <laughs> his rook on a more active square, you say it's just a draw. Uh, but at the moment, he's uh, he's not. So play rook c8, and I decided that uh, he, the pawn was not going anywhere. So I'm just gonna keep, keep uh, improving my position, getting the best kind of uh, structure I can get. Uh, and of course, this position is is better for white, but it's not easy. It's not it's not something uh, that's simple, uh, simply won. And and uh, I think if you play against one of the best players in the world, they're probably gonna 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 make a draw against you. Um, I don't think I, I could win this against uh, Kramnik, say. Uh, Rook c2. I thought that was uh, bad, but. Um, Due to this move, but of course he has queen d6, and um, he is very active, and 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 this pawn, it's an extra pawn, and uh, and it's a pass pawn, but it's also a weak pawn, so I have to try and and and, and that, that gets keep on hold on to it by not uh, being too passive, um, and black is of course close to uh, to equality. I'm, I'm at the moment I realize okay the best I could get was probably to have one extra pass pawn on the queen side in a rook ending, and it's if black is uh, placed uh, correctly uh, and, and and do well you can see in Dvoretsky's endgame manual that it's a, it is a draw but it's not easy and uh, and you can easily lose it it's a little bit like the four against three on on the king side where uh, where it is a draw but uh, even kasparov lost it once so and he by the way he's not the best defender in the world um and here i'm i'm trying to now control the d square and and 
Uh, well, if I'm allowed, I'll just push the pawn. But of course, he starts to, to annoy me. And I decided that, okay, this was not the right plan. I have to give up the pawn. And uh, this was the trick. I'm getting back the pawn. So I'm just... Uh, and this is and here I made, I think, a mistake. I think the B pawn is stronger than the A pawn. I thought at the time that um, that the A pawn would be stronger because it was further away from his king, but it's also giving less shelter to uh, my king. And often you have to hide behind the pawns, and it's better if you have a B pawn, you have... Uh, You have two ways to go, to uh, to to jump out from under the shelter. But with an A pawn, you only have the B file. So I took with this pawn, which was wrong, I think. And I don't, I think Black could have hold, uh, held this, um, but it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. Uh, White's plan is is very simple. He will have to, uh, the rook will have to cover the pawns, and the king will go to the queen side. And push the A pawn. And uh, I'm just gonna push it as far as it can go. And then I'm gonna switch into this. And this rook behind the pawn um, is a very good idea. I can't remember exactly how he could hold the draw. It's it's not easy for Black. I think um, he should have played. He should have gone after the pawn a little bit earlier. Managed to get this pawn, and now it's one because the pawn ending is winning, and White's king can just jump up. And this was a nice little trick. Um, and here, uh, Black resigned. So White was able to keep his slight initiative going and winning a pawn and uh, winning as draw is ending at the end. Um, and and Dava Palo um, was not happy about losing this game. He was never a really good a really good loser, and uh, and he was he kept <laughs> to be honest he kept whining about this for days. And we were playing in, in the tournament, so we were all staying at the same hotel. And and he he was uh, talking about ah oh, he shouldn't have lost this and ah oh, blah, blah blah and so on. And um, and the end I, as I said. Come on, even uh, Karpov and Kasparov loses sometimes. And, and he replied, yes, to each other. And uh, <laughs> so that's the respect you get. Anyway, uh, he, he actually later got a revenge in 2010 and went on to win the Danish, Danish championship, his, his only title, but uh, one-time title. Um, Anyway, this was uh, DM Talks with a little bit about the symmetrical structure that can arise when white takes on d5 in the isolated queen pawn position. This series will continue with other uh, important themes in this structure. Uh, they will come like stripping once in a while. Thank you for watching.